In the second video on section 3.5, we're going to review some chemical techniques that you should be familiar with and be able to describe in detail. Right, this part of the course is known as research and chemistry, and what it involves really is just the expect the SQA expect you to have a reasonably detailed knowledge of a variety of chemical techniques. Uh, this includes the separation techniques, distillation, filtration and condensing, methods for heating samples, collecting and measuring gases and volumetric titrations. So I'll just quickly run through each one. So distillation is a separation method and we use it to separate liquids with different boiling points. A classic example is separating ethanol from water. Ethanol boils at 80 degrees C water 100. So if you heat up the mixture to 80 degrees, the ethanol boils, the gas travels up here down this tube where it's cooled by the condenser which would have water flowing through it, cold water. Uh, the gas would cool down to below 80, turn back into liquid and would be collected over here. But it can be used to separate any mixture of liquids as long as they have different boiling points. Filtration, again used to separate mixtures, solids from liquids. So the liquid that comes through the filled paper is known as the filtrate. The solid collected in the filled paper is the residue. Sometime when you're doing a filtration it's the liquid you're interested in, the filtrate, and you just chuck away the residue. But say it was a precipitation reaction, you know, what you'd mainly be interested in would be the residue and you would just chuck away the liquid. So the right, third separation method is condensing. So it's turning something from a gas into a liquid. And the first time you came across this was testing that showing that water is produced when you burn a hydrocarbon. So we burn a hydrocarbon producing carbon dioxide and water vapour, which would be sucked through this tube here. And then to condense out the water, we pass the gases into this U-tube, which is cooled with the ice water mix. And doing this would cool the gas mixture down to, maybe down to about five degrees C. So that's way below the boiling point of water. So the water turns back. Once you drop below 100, the water would turn back from water vapour to water liquid and collect here. The carbon dioxide gas produced uh, has got a boiling point of minus 30, so it wouldn't uh, condense out at this temperature. It would then go on through and carry on and actually went into the lime water, which would then turn milky. So, you can use condensed out uh, water vapour or any, any other gases as long as their boiling points, say, maybe certainly above 5 degrees C. Right, uh, we've used various methods to heat samples over the years you've been doing chemistry. Most normally, a Bunsen burner. Remember, when we're heating samples, we always use the blue flame with the air hole open because it's the hottest clean flame, giving us complete combustion. But if you're heating something which is very flammable, then it's quite dangerous to do it with a naked flame. And when we're heating up, say, ethanol, for example, we'd put the ethanol in the boiling tube and put the boiling tube into a beaker of boiled water. And this way we can heat up the ethanol without risking a naked flame. Obviously you're limited here to getting a temperature of no higher than 100 degrees C. A third technique, one which you probably haven't really had a chance to use, is using equipment like this. It's called a heating mantle and uh, it uses a electric element to provide the heat. So there's no naked flame and the advantage being you get far better control of temperature than say you would do a Bunsen burner 
and you get a higher temperature than you could with boiling water. However, the downside is it's very, quite an expensive piece of equipment and uh, although we do use it quite a lot at advanced hire, we use it very little up to hire. Right, over the years we've looked at various ways of collecting and measuring gases. Uh, the most low tech way is to collect it underwater and we could have a test tube sitting underwater and the gas would uh, push out the water. If we want to actually measure the volume of gas being produced then it would need to be a measuring cylinder not a test tube. This is fine as long as the gas is insoluble in water or you might get away with it if the gas is just very very slightly soluble in water. But if the gas is very soluble in water this technique would be no use and we'd use a gas syringe which you have used and in fact this is going to work well irrespective of the gas being water soluble or not water soluble so this is usually a safer option to go for. And finally you need to know quite in-depth knowledge of how to carry out volumetric titrations. So remember volumetric analysis involves using a standard solution to determine the concentration of another substance. You've done lots of acid alkali titrations you also get redox titrations of course and you ha this part of the course you really have to be able to describe quite a few things in quite a lot of detail and you have a copy of this sheet okay and really I'm just referring you to this and you should really know this in a lot of detail so it covers how to prepare a standard solution, the procedure for the correct use of a pipette, the procedure for the correct use of a burette and a short discussion on indicators. Now it's been common over the last few years to ask you to explain in detail how you do one of these things and it's usually a three mark question so they're looking for quite a lot of detail. You wouldn't necessarily have to mention every single thing mentioned here but uh, you do need a reasonably detailed answer. Okay so four things you must be able to do. Be able to recognise situations where distillation, filtration or condensing should be used to separate mixtures. Should be able to discuss the pros and cons of different heating methods. The pros and cons of different gas collecting measuring techniques and describe in detail the correct pre procedure for titrations including how to prepare a standard solution, how to use a pipette and how to use a burette.